happy Saturday, risers. We had a packed week of amazing interviews. And of course, there was also debate number four. We talked to our friend of the show, Ryan Grimm. He's the Washington bureau chief of The Intercept. Ryan had some criticism of Joe Biden's memory of the impetus for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. <laughs> After Biden claimed to have a larger role in its beginnings, let's take a look. She conceived of the idea. She pushed Barney Frank to include it in the House bill. She pressed the White House to get behind it. And then every time the Senate tried to weaken it, she went public and threatened all of them. And she, she even said towards the very end, she said, I would rather have a strong CFPB or no CFPB at all and a lot of blood and teeth on the Senate floor. Joe Biden was not involved in this. You might be able to Google and find a speech or two he gave about Wall Street reform, but yes, I covered this on a daily basis. This was, I was very lucky. This was kind of my beat, just covering the CFPB for almost a year, or the creation of the CFPB. He, he was not part of it. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was straight from the person who knew exactly what he was talking about. And Biden moment on there, it was so weird and like patronizing when he's like, you're welcome. Like, you did a good job on that. It was like, what? Yeah. What have you done? Let's go look at what you did when you were in the U.S. Senate. Well, and what was fun is yeah. we actually watched the debate yeah. with Ryan. Right. And so we like, the moment what? that he, that that moment yeah. unfolded, his ears perked right up. He was like, what? He's like, that is not true. And yeah. so this also sparked, I mean, after that night, it sparked him going and digging even deeper right. yeah. and continuing to confirm that no, Joe Biden yeah. was nowhere to be found. In fact, he got in touch with um, Scott Brown, who was the senator yeah. from Massachusetts, that Elizabeth Warren ultimately defeated to get in the Senate. But when he was in the Senate, he was a key part of, he was a key vote on that bill. That's and right. even Scott Brown, who was beat by Elizabeth Warren and has an ax to grind, was like, no, Biden was nowhere to be found. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well. Also on debate night. Chuck Rocha, senior advisor to Bernie Sanders, confirmed AOC's Sanders endorsement. I think that she has been a beacon for a lot of young progressives out there who've fought against the system. I think about, I have talked about the same old folks being in Congress, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, for too long, and we need a lot of folks with new ideas. But that's kind of shut out unless you're a millionaire or a billionaire, got a lot of money. So it's hard to, I tell people all the time as a consultant, doing politics is that it's something to be said when you beat somebody who spent over a million dollars and you spend just over a hundred thousand. That yeah. never happened. So there's something there very, very special. And I would encourage everybody to come out and see what yeah. we have to say on Saturday. Yeah, so yeah. Chuck cool. just confirming yeah. there what, so this was kind of cool because Bernie had teased during the debate yeah. that there would be a special guest on Saturday. So of course everybody's right. like, who's it gonna be? And it's in Queens, maybe it's AOC. Washington Post got the scoop. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, literally minutes later with Chuck there, we were able to confirm. So that yeah, was kind of cool. Was, it was very cool to see that. And, and it was just, I mean, it was awesome because, I mean, obviously Bernie had a great night. And so Chuck was there. He was, you, you could just tell how energized him and his team were both, I think, off the endorsement on, and just, you know, off the debate performance. I mean, Absolutely. Just had a heart attack, well, hasn't been great in the polls, and he came out, and he just came out swinging. So, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, another member of the Bernie camp, National Policy Director and Senior Advisor for the campaign, Josh Orton, he gave us more details on Sanders' worker plan. Let's take a listen. Bernie's been working on these particular issues his entire yeah. adult life, right? Even back when he was mayor of Vermont, uh, mayor of Burlington, Vermont, you know, he was having community discussions about worker ownership, right? Bernie has, I think, most precisely diagnosed the problem of corporate power. I think that what we what we see here is a complete autopsy of all the ways that corporations, through legislation, through taxes, through um, buying out the legislative process and the political process, have really taken over all of the levers of power and pulled every single one of them to make themselves more powerful. Mm -hmm. I think that's a diagnosis and how it's crushed middle uh, income families that Bernie has been making for a generation. And I think what you're seeing now is a very comprehensive plan to address every specific part and every way that corporations have essentially been motivating, motivated by their own greed to hold on to wealth and power. And whatever you think of this plan, one. I yeah. think it deserves a lot more attention and yeah, debate because this is maybe the single most transformational thing that Bernie has put out. He's talking about workers owning 20% of the shares in larger corporations and having 45% of the board seats. There's yeah. also a lot in there about mergers and breaking up monopolies and how you could actually tax corporations rather than just pretending to tax corporations. So it was actually, it was a really big deal. It was cool to have Josh to bring it all down. No, and the best part of the show is these policy you know these policy debates looking into these things finding out what the actual impact would be what's the actual problem that we're all trying to solve here and so anytime we can have somebody like that 
stop by and actually dig into it, it's a great time. Yeah, he was yeah. integral in designing that policy, mm -hmm. that, so that was very cool. We also talked to former teacher and current journalist Eric Blanc. He was heading to the picket line to join striking Chicago public school teachers. He gave his take on media coverage of strikes. Check it out. This is really a major historic development, the return of the strike to the U.S. political scene. And obviously the corporate media is going to do everything possible to minimize or ignore that. So, you know, the exciting thing is at this point, despite that, the strikes are continuing to spread. The media is not talking about it, but that didn't stop West Virginia from spreading to Arizona and Oklahoma. It didn't stop UTLA, the teachers union in Los Angeles, from striking. So I think that, you know, to be honest, the corporate media's impact is real, but the word of the strike has spread. Social media has played a big role. People see these viral videos of uh, striking teachers uh, on the picket line, singing, dancing, you know, people want to know how to fight back and they're going to find out uh, what's going on one way or the other. Eric's written a book on the teachers mm -hmm. movement, which is something I've also covered on the ground. And he pointed out that this is the largest strike of teachers in our nation's history. And it gets like this much media coverage. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't get nearly the amount of coverage we, uh, they deserve. He is on the ground there. It's pretty interesting. We're going to see what the developments are. I'm sure we'll cover it here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll have more rising for you tomorrow, so check us out then.